Hi, I'm Mr. New Jersey, and today we're going to talk about someone who is perhaps New Jersey's most famous inventor, Thomas Alva Edison. Thomas Edison was born in Ohio in 1847. Edison lived in Ohio until 1854, when his family moved to Port Huron, Michigan. Surprisingly, Edison did poorly in school, to the point that he was ultimately pulled out of formal school and was thereafter taught by his mother. Edison's mother purchased him a science book, causing Edison to rapidly develop an interest in science, to the point that he was soon performing scientific experiments in their house. Edison would later say that his mother was the person who most contributed to his success. Thomas Edison's sense of hearing became poor around this stage of his life, but he could hear enough to get by. As a young person, he held a job of selling snacks and newspapers on a train. Edison never attended college. Instead, he ended up traveling the country working as a telegrapher, at one point even handling telegraph messages for the Union Army during the Civil War. In 1869, Edison finally decided to quit his life in telegraphy to focus on his true passion, inventing things. He got his first patent for an electrical vote recorder in 1869, but it wasn't commercially successful. Edison then moved to New York City, where he finally got his big commercial breakthrough by making improvements to the stock exchange ticker. In 1870, Edison set up a company in Newark, New Jersey, which manufactured stock tickers. Edison also worked in Newark to improve the telegraph. 1871 proved to be an important year for Edison's personal life. His mother died early on in the year, and later on in the year, Edison married one of his former employees, Mary Stilwell. They would go on to have three children, the first two of whom Edison nicknamed Dot and Dash in reference to the symbols used in Morse code. However, the Edison's marriage would prove to be a troubled one, in large part because Edison worked late nights and became incredibly wrapped up in his experiments, sometimes even sleeping in his lab rather than going home to spend a time with his family. After five years in Newark, Edison wanted to set up a new, more spacious lab, so in early 1876, he moved his operations a little bit south to the Menlo Park section of Raritan Township, Middlesex County, New Jersey. Edison would go on to make many of his most famous inventions in Menlo Park. Edison's worldwide reputation as a major inventor really took off with his invention of the phonograph at Menlo Park in 1877. The phonograph allowed sound to be recorded and replayed for the first time in human history, and the first sound Edison successfully recorded was him saying, Mary had a little lamb. Excitement around the invention quickly spread, and President Rutherford B. Hayes even invited Edison to the White House to demonstrate it. Soon after Edison's invention of the phonograph, he earned the nickname the Wizard of Menlo Park. In later years, Edison would always consider the phonograph his favorite of his inventions. In 1878, Edison made another major invention, a better form of telephone transmitter that dramatically improved the quality of sound transmitted over the phone. In 1879, we arrive at Edison's most famous work, the light bulb. Contrary to popular belief, Thomas Edison did not technically invent the light bulb. Other innovators had already used electricity to produce light, but their light bulbs would always burn out too quickly to be viable, lasting just a few minutes. What Edison did was invent the first electric light bulb which lasted long enough to be practical and commercially viable, expanding the lifespan of a light bulb from a matter of minutes to a matter of hours, and thereafter from a matter of hours to a matter of days. Thomas Edison soon illuminated his Menlo Park factory with electric light bulbs, and on New Year's Eve, 1879, Christie Street, 
the street on which the Menlo Park Lab was located, became the first street in the world illuminated by electric light. Edison's operations at Menlo Park gradually expanded over the course of the lab's decade-long existence. Additional employers, additional buildings, and on-site housing for workers were among the improvements made during this time. Edison's Menlo Park lab became so busy that it kept churning out new inventions left and right. Edison applied for approximately 400 patents during his time at Menlo Park. Initially, Edison was deeply involved in the details of each experiment conducted at Menlo Park, but as the laboratory's operations expanded, Edison had to delegate more and more responsibility to his employees. Edison himself would be involved in some experiments and inventions more than others, but publicly, he often received credit for pretty much everything that came out of his labs. Mary Edison passed away in 1884. Thomas Edison remarried two years later to a woman named Mina Miller. Edison would have three additional children with Mina. By the mid-1880s, Thomas Edison decided that it was time for yet another expansion of his operations, so he built a new factory in West Orange, New Jersey. This factory was ten times the size of the one in Menlo Park. Edison moved his operations out of Menlo Park and into the new factory in 1887. Edison also moved his family to a mansion in West Orange named Glenmont. In West Orange, Edison continued the work he was known for, rapidly making inventions and improving his previous inventions, such as by continuing to work on the phonograph. About half of the patents Edison received throughout his life came from his work at the West Orange Lab. Edison employed thousands of people at his West Orange Lab. One well-known aspect of Edison's time in West Orange is his work pioneering the early film industry. Edison patented a motion picture camera, the kinetograph, and he patented a peephole viewing device, the kinetoscope, to go along with it. Much of the knowledge and work necessary to develop motion picture technology came from William Kennedy Laurie Dixon, one of Edison's employees. Edison needed a bright place to make his movies, so he created the world's first movie studio, called the Black Maria, in 1893. The Black Maria was placed on a rotating track so it could maximize its access to sunlight over the course of the day. The most famous movie produced by Edison's team is The Great Train Robbery, filmed partially in a New Jersey forest. If you want to watch the film today, you can easily find it on YouTube. Thomas Edison also had a well-known friendship with automobile magnate Henry Ford. Edison was already famous when the young Ford was just starting out his work on gas-powered cars. But when the two met at a conference in New York City, Edison excitedly encouraged Ford to continue his work. The two would go on to collaborate on various technology-focused projects, and once they were rich, they even got vacation homes next to each other in Florida. During World War I, Edison served as chairman of the Naval Consulting Board, advising the U.S. Navy on scientific matters. Edison grew disappointed about the job because he felt the Navy was not implementing enough of his suggestions. However, one major contribution Edison made was successfully pushing for the creation of the Naval Research Laboratory, a permanent research lab for the Navy. Later in his life, Edison grew sickly, and on October 18, 1931, Thomas Edison died at his Glenmont estate. By the time of his death, Edison had received 1,093 United States patents. In the years since Edison's death, Raritan Township in Middlesex County, New Jersey, the former site of the Menlo Park Lab, has been renamed Edison, New Jersey. And Ohio, the state of Thomas Edison's birth, has honored him with a statue in the U.S. Capitol Building's National Statutory Hall Collection. However, 
Thomas Edison's death was not the end of the Edison family's impact on New Jersey and the United States. In fact, one of Thomas Edison's sons from his second marriage, Charles Edison, would go on to have an impactful political career at the state and national levels. Charles Edison was a Democrat, upending his family's Republican Party tradition. During the Great Depression, Charles served in the National Recovery Administration to aid Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal. Charles later briefly served as Roosevelt's Secretary of the Navy. In 1940, Charles was elected Governor of New Jersey, and he served in that role from January 1941 to January 1944. During his governorship, Charles Edison became known for fighting a powerful political machine run by Jersey City Mayor Frank Haig. Perhaps Charles's most lasting achievement was his push to reform the New Jersey Constitution. Although his proposal was defeated in a referendum of state voters, his push for change would help inspire the New Jersey Constitution of 1947, which is the Constitution New Jersey still uses today. Charles Edison died in 1969. That's all the Edison family history I have for this video. I barely scratched the surface on the hundreds of inventions Thomas Edison made, or the political achievements of Charles Edison, since I had to carefully pick and choose what to include for time's sake. But believe me when I say that if you want to keep researching these people on your own, there's a lot more to learn. Now, let's talk about Thomas Edison-related tourism. There are two main sites here in New Jersey that you can visit. The first is Edison State Park in Edison, New Jersey. This is the former site of Thomas Edison's Menlo Park Lab, which has unfortunately been torn down. However, a large monument has been constructed in the park, which is a tower with a large light bulb at the top. There is also a forest in the park with some nature trails. Lastly, a small museum has been constructed at the site, which contains several Thomas Edison inventions and discusses Edison's life and his work in Menlo Park. One highlight of the museum is listening to an old Edison phonograph play music. Entrance to the museum costs a small fee. The other main Edison-related site in New Jersey is Thomas Edison National Historic Park in West Orange. This national park site contains Thomas Edison's well-preserved West Orange Laboratory Complex. You have to pay to enter the lab, and once you do, you can walk around it on your own but I would highly recommend that you pay the additional small fee for the audio tour. I didn't pay for the tour on my visit several years ago, and regretted it because I didn't think there were enough signs around the lab to understand everything without the audio guide. The park also includes Thomas Edison's grave and his Glenmont Mansion, just a short drive from the main lab complex. The only way to enter the mansion is by taking a guided tour and you have to go to the laboratory complex first to get a ticket and car pass before driving to the mansion. Finally, there are several sites out of state where you can go to further explore the life of Thomas Edison, including, but not limited to, his birthplace in Ohio, and the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, which contains a replica of Thomas Edison's Menlo Park Lab. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Thomas Edison, and I hope you'll make a trip to one of the sites associated with him. If you will, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I release more videos about the visionaries of New Jersey. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.